Hello friends. Today's episode of the Who Would Win series it is a very special one. In today's fight we will have several premieres, so I advise you to watch this episode carefully, because you will not regret it. First of all, the fight will no longer be held in the open field, but in the water, because we chose two marine animals. The other rules remain unchanged, but if until now our fighters relied on physical strength and weapons such as fangs and claws, you will see that the animals we have chosen for today have completely different weapons and fighting techniques. We could say briefly that our first fighter is a chemist, and the second a physicist. You will understand later why I say this, but first I would like to ask your opinion on an issue that concerns everyone who watches my videos. Therefore, our first animal will be presented by a male voice, and the second by a female voice. My request is to tell me in the comments section which of these two voices you will want to present from now on the videos on this channel. It's simple, I just ask you to specify in the comments man's voice or woman's voice, depending on your preferences. Thank you for your help and now, I invite you to meet today's fighters. So our first fighter today is the Blue Ringed Octopus. I specify that by this name, Blue Ringed Octopus, I will not refer to a single species, but to all the approximately 10 species identified and described so far, which belong to the genus Hopalaclana. These seemingly harmless animals range from the Sea of Japan down to the waters of southern Australia, across from the Philippines to Vanuatu. They inhabit depths from intertidal flats down to 50 meters. They tend to hide in crevices or under rocks during the day, and emerge at night. Blue ringed octopuses can be identified by their yellowish skin and characteristic blue and black rings that change color dramatically when the animal is threatened. Size differs between species, but they range from 4 to 6 centimeters long, with arms reaching lengths of 7 to 10 centimeters. Octopuses of this genus weigh between 10 and 100 grams, the average being around 55 grams. Females are slightly larger than males. Their average lifespan is only 2 years. Like all other octopuses, blue ringed octopuses have blue blood, no bones and three hearts. The skin of blue ringed octopus is equipped with chromatophores, which are pigment cells that an animal can expand or contract by muscular action. These cells vary in color, and as the animals expands some or contracts others, its color changes. They, along with all other octopuses, have eight arms which are attached around their mouth. These arms have rows of broad, muscular suckers. The two rear tentacles are generally used to walk on the sea floor, while the other six are used to forage for food, hence some biologists refer to the animals as having six arms and two legs. The octopus has the highest brain-to-body mass ratios of all invertebrates, it is also greater than that of many vertebrates. It has a highly complex nervous system, only part of which is localized in its brain, which is contained in a cartilaginous capsule. They have two very well-developed eyes that are similar to those possessed by vertebrates. As I already mentioned, blue-ringed octopuses have three hearts, with a central heart and one over each gill. These gills in turn are suspended in a cavity under the body. Seawater enters the octopus through this cavity, due to the pumping action of the mantle, a muscular bag-like structure within which is stored the organs of the octopus. The mantle is not responsible for disposing of the seawater from the body however, Rather the water is ejected through a funnel, which can be aimed in different directions. The propulsion of water from this funnel allows the octopus to move rapidly and escape. The funnel can also shoot out ink in some blue-ringed octopuses, which comes from a gland located in the liver. Although I intended to describe as briefly as possible these animals that appear to be aliens rather than terrestrial, they have so many amazing characteristics that it is impossible for me not to tell you. Thus, they can ooze through an opening no bigger than one of its eyeballs. Its incredible flexibility comes from its musculature, which consists of fibers that run in three directions, allowing it to change shape. Although octopuses has a closed circulatory system like higher animals as well, the blood is a poor carrier of oxygen. As a result, they tires easily. These amazing animals have an ability to regenerate an injured or lost arm. It usually takes about six weeks for an arm to regenerate. It has been found that, along with arms, octopuses can even regenerate part of an eye that is damaged. And yet, you will say that although amazing in so many ways, these little animals look rather cute and harmless than ruthless killers. So why did we choose them to fight in our match today? Well, you should know that these animals, despite their small size and awesome color, are the most deadly of all cephalopods. 
The blue ringed octopus has two poison glands that secrete two types of poison into the saliva. One type of poison secreted is primarily effective against crabs, its primary food source, and the other is very toxic and is used against predators for defensive purposes. It is not yet known whether the octopus simply secretes saliva near prey and waits for it to become incapacitated, or if it actually bites its prey. Once the prey is dead, the octopus begins consuming it with its powerful beak like mouth. The second type of venom it secretes, and the most dangerous is tetradoxin, that is produced in two posterior salivary glands by symbiotic bacteria. This venom is more toxic than that of any land animal. Although a blue ringed octopus is small, its venom is powerful enough to kill not one, but 26 humans in just a few minutes. Those bright blue rings that fascinate us and from which they got their name, are actually warning signs that tell us that the little animal feels threatened and is ready to use its terrible poison against us. You must keep in mind that the beaks of these little animals can penetrate a wetsuit. There is no known antidote to a bite by a blue ringed octopus, but nevertheless it has been confirmed that blue ringed octopuses are immune to the venom of their own and that of other pygmy octopus. Reports that this species sprays venom into the surrounding water to paralyze prey are still under investigation. The good news for swimmers in the waters where blue ringed octopuses are found, is that they are retiring creatures and will only bite if they are being harassed and poked. The animal we chose to face our little poison chemist is a physicist whose weapon is electricity. The torpedo fish also known as lesser electric ray, Brazilian electric ray, small electric ray, spotted torpedo ray or trembler, is a species of numfish in the family Narcinidae. It is a small slow-moving bottom dweller fish, living in the surf zone of sandy or muddy beaches. The lesser electric ray can be found along the beaches and coastal waters of the western Atlantic Ocean between Argentina and North Carolina, and it is locally common in the Gulf of Mexico. It has also been documented in the Pacific Ocean near the Yucatan. This species of ray has a near circular body and a short tail. It grows to approximately 45 centimeters or 18 inches long, and 20 centimeters or 8 inches wide. The torpedo fish is a flat cartilaginous fish that belongs to one of two families of electric rays. These rays have the ability to generate a strong electric discharge that is used to stun their prey and defend themselves against predators. All living creatures produce electricity, even humans, but electric rays have two special kidney-shaped organs that generate and store electricity like a battery. Electric ray generate electricity through muscular contractions. The electric currents produced by some species of fishes, such as the numfish and torpedo rays are generated in cells called electrocytes. When an electrocyte is stimulated, a movement of ions, electrically charged atoms, across the cell membrane results in an electric discharge. The electrocytes of most electric fishes are modified muscle cells. Electrocytes are usually arranged in columns within electric organs. This arrangement increases the electrical output, much like a row of batteries placed end to end. The electric organs of the electric rays contain about 45 columns of around 700 electrocytes. Electrical discharges escape through the dorsal surface of the fish. This is because the dorsal surface of both the electric organ and the body have less resistance than the surrounding tissues. Large Atlantic torpedo rays can generate enough power to produce a shock of about 220 volts, while smaller rays, like the lesser electric ray can only muster a shock of about 37 volts. This is enough to knock a fully grown person off their feet, but is not enough to kill a healthy human, although it could potentially kill someone with underlying health problems. However, death could occur if a person is knocked unconscious by the shock, or injured to the extent that they could not swim and then drown. The ray uses its electrical ability as both a defensive measure and as a way of hunting food. Although the electric ray is sluggish and generally a poor swimmer it will use a short burst of speed to get near to a fish and then deliver the electric shock, stunning the fish and allowing the ray to attack it. If they can get close enough electric rays will wrap their wings around a fish to deliver multiple electric shocks and kill their prey outright. The electric ray has an expandable mouth which allows it to consume very large fish. Its electrical charge will also be used as a defensive measure to fend off large predators such as sharks. 
Although rare, humans have been shocked when they have stepped on electric rays while walking through the sea near to the shore, and divers who think it is a good idea to touch electric rays often get a mild warning shock. It is actually thought that electric ray have two different types of shock. A small, light warning shock to discourage anything from getting to close, and a full power shock aimed to kill prey or attackers. This is because an electric ray can only hold a certain amount of charge in its electrical organs, and its most powerful shocks use up most of its electricity and the ray must wait some time to regenerate. The smaller warning shocks allow the electric ray to ward off anything it sees as a threat while retaining most of its electricity. So how do you think this fight will unfold and which of these two unusual fighters do you think is more likely to survive this confrontation? As I told you from the beginning, now it is no longer a confrontation based on physical force, so the difference in size between these two animals does not really matter. Both animals have weapons strong enough to kill their opponent, and both can do so without even touching it. There is indeed a big question here, and this is an essential one. Can a blue-ringed octopus really spit its poison at a distance, or is it forced to bite its opponent to inject it? This issue is still being studied, if any of you have any sources about this, please share them with us. An advantage of the octopus could be the fact that its sight is much sharper than that of the torpedo fish and that it could therefore sneak insensibly to bite its opponent. On the other hand, it seems that the torpedo fish can spot its prey like its shark relatives, based on the electrical signals generated. That being said, until we get more information from researchers about these amazing animals, I think torpedo fish is the favorite to win this fight. Its discharges are strong enough to kill the little octopus, I think they have a longer range than the venom and, in addition, they act instantly, faster than any poison. What do you think about that? Do you think that our smart octopus could somehow trick its opponent into discharging its batteries in vain so that it can then kill it? Which of our fighters today impressed you the most? I'm waiting for your opinions in the comments, and I remind you to vote for your favorite voice for future videos on this channel. Thank you for your support. Take care of yourself and your loved ones.